So we're going to be, begin talking about the laws of exponents. It's a wonderful way to start our experiment. We're working with videos while I'm away for a couple days. So, if n is a positive integer, then a to the power n is the product of n factors of a. So, I know you guys hate seeing all letters, but a to the n is just this. A multiplied by itself n times. A simpler way of looking at it, a squared equals a times a. Hopefully that makes sense. Now we're going to run through a bunch of the other laws that you've discussed in previous years. So the next one, I'll move this up a little bit, right here. Multiplication of 2. So we have a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So you add the exponents. When we multiply, key here, same base, add the exponents. That same base. You keep the base, but you add the indices or exponents. So an example, a squared times a to the third. That's also seen as a times a, which is this, times a, times a, times a, which is this. There's a squared, a to the third. How many times? One, two, three, four, five, a to the power of five, or a two plus three, to give me the power of five. This is the correct answer. I'm just showing you the short form and the long way. Quick review because this is something that you've covered before. Now, scroll it up a bit. We have division. Oh, let's do this one in red. Now, this is saying we're subtracting the exponents when we have the same base. A over M over a over n is the same as writing a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n. So we're subtracting exponents or indices. Example, I like using this one because we can do this easy way. We have a to the power of 5 divided by a to the power of 3. We know that's a to the power of 5 minus 3, which is a squared. I can keep writing straight along this because the equal sign, these are all equivalent statements, so it's all true. Or, some people like to see this, a times a times a times a times a, a to the power of 5, divided by a to the power of 3. So, we all know that a divided by a is equal to 1. So I can do what's called cancel. So A cancels with A because that's just 1. A cancels with A. A cancels with A. It leaves me with this on top. So it leaves me with A squared. All works the same. Now, as we're quickly going through these, our next law, we have a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So that means this term inside the brackets is being multiplied by itself n times. Simply, we'll do it with numbers because that's preferred way. If I have a to the power of 3 times a to the power to the power of 4, just like this, that means I have a to the 3 times a to the 3 times a to the 3 times a to the 3, which is 3 plus 3 is 6 plus 3 is 9 plus 3 is 12. So I have a to the power of 12. Or I could have simply done this, a 3 times 4, a to the 12. Multiply these exponents when it's written like this. Now, this quickly can be used for a couple other laws. We have here the power of a product. So 
we're going to take AB to the power of n. They, so that means I have A to the power of n and B to the power of n. Now, what happens if we have something like 2x squared y to the third all to the fifth power? The key here, what they're trying to say up here, is I have a to the power of n, b to the power of n. All the terms in the brackets need to go to that exponent. So what that means is I have 2 to the power of 5. Then I have x squared to the power of 5. Then I have y to the third to the power of 5. So 2 to the power of 5 is 32. x squared to the power of 5 is x to the 10th because I have 2 times 5. And now I have 3 times 5 for the y. So I have y to the 15th. I know this video is dragging on, but we got to get all these laws covered as quick as possible. Because this is supposed to be review. You guys love that. Now, the power of a quotient is the quotient of the power. So now that's just a confusing statement. So, let's try this. Same as before. A to the power of n, B to the power of n. We can do this easily. If I have 2 over 3 to the power of 5, I'm actually going to do, yeah, we'll leave it like this. That's the same as writing 2 to the power of 5 over 3 to the power of 5. Everything in the brackets is to the power five. Now, let's see. I want to do one more quick example for this. I'll change the color so we know it's a new example. If I have x squared over y to the fifth, and all of that is squared, well, that means I have x squared squared, so x to the power 4, 2 times 2, over y to the 5th squared, which is y to the 10th. 5 times 2, 2 times 2. Hopefully this is good review, it makes a lot of sense to you guys. And we've got two more quick ones to do. Anything to the power of 0 equals 1 when a does not equal 0. So, how easy is this? 2 to the power of 0 equals 1. The reason why is because if you look at this, if I have a to the third divided by a to the third, that's the same as writing a times a times a over a times a times a. Well, we know that that is equal to 1. We know that that is equal to 1. And we know that that is equal to 1. So 1 times 1 times 1 is equal to 1. Which up here, we have a 3 minus 3 equals a to the 0. a to the 0 equals 1. So anything anything to the power zero equals one. Anything. And one last law. When we're dividing, we have a to the negative n. This negative n is the same as writing it like this. So one half is equal to two to the negative one. It's kind of a confusing little deal, but how do we do this? Let's try example using letters. That's an M. I have a x squared divided by x to the fifth. We write that out the long way. We get x times x over x 
times x times x times x times x. That cancels with that. That with that. It leaves me with 1 over x times x times x, which is this at 1, which is x to the negative 3. Or 1 over x to the negative 1 over x to the third. So, simply x squared divided by x to the fifth equals x to minus 5 equals x to the negative 3. This is all the same thing. Hopefully that works and we'll stop there. Continue on with another one in 